Hey beautiful, welcome back to my channel, Juliet Kitchen, Yasmin here. Can you guess what today's recipe is? It's warm, it's comforting, it's nutrient dense, it's for a butternut squash uh, soup. I have several of them, but this one, I wanted to use the butternut squash, cauliflower, and a whole bunch of other ingredients that I've selected. Let's get started. Before we get started, please be kind and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and hit the notification bell so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. Also, your likes to this video is very much appreciated. Thank you. Before I start cooking, I always prep my ingredients ahead of time. One beautiful butternut squash peeled and diced. One cauliflower, I'm using just the florets. Three Roma tomatoes, chopped. The seeds can stay in. One celery stalk, chopped. One leek, rinsed thoroughly and soaked in water. I also like to use a lot of garlics, one onion, and fresh herbs. Okay, so all of my ingredients have been prepped, and I'm going to start with some extra virgin olive oil. I just want to coat the bottom of the pan or pot. I'm going to heat that up. I love using a good quality olive oil. It should be hot. Let's see. Saute onions for a couple of minutes. What I want to do with the leeks is instead of pouring it into a strainer, you just want to lift it out of the water. This way if there's any residue, sandy residue, uh, you won't be putting it back into the leeks. Oh, I love the smell of onions. I'm going to add in the leeks and celery. I'm going to cook this another one to two minutes. I want to add a pinch of salt. Okay, I'm going to add in my garlic, quite a bit of garlic. Makes a big difference. I'm a little bit skeptical about their ginger, but I think it's going to work. My beautiful herbs, sage and rosemary, they go well together with the butternut squash. Okay, I love cumin. I'm actually going to add the cumin seed, a good one teaspoon. Fennel seeds, I'm going to add just a half a teaspoon. It has a sweet flavor, but it's very strong. And one of the ingredients I very rarely use is curry powder. I'm going to add three quarters of a teaspoon of curry powder. And I'm a bit skeptical about that, but I do think it's going to work. I like spiciness. I'm going to add one full teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Why not? You can adjust any of the flavors to your taste bud. Add in my tomatoes. Wow, it's really smelling great already. A little bit more salt. I'm going to let that cook for a minute. Oh my God, the aroma in here. My lovely butternut squash. And I'm going to add in my carrots in a little as well. And I need a good amount of salt in here. Don't be shy with the salt. I have a feeling it's going to be delicious. This is cannellini beans. Cannellini, I never say it correctly, but any white bean will do. That's one 15 ounce can that I rinse thoroughly. You could use the fresh beans, you just have to soak it overnight. I'm using chicken stock, but to keep it vegetarian, you can use vegetable stock. If you want the vegetables to be submerged. Okay. I did want to add in white wine. This is about half a cup. Usually I add it with the vegetables and cook it down, but it'll be just fine. White wine is optional. The next time I make it, I'll add the um, wine or the I think it's going to need more salt, but I don't want to do that right now. I'm going to add it to the end if it does need, because the stock is going to reduce. I'm just going to cover this and allow it to simmer. 
Okay, beautiful people. It's been about 20 minutes or so. I think the vegetables should be ready. So let's check here. Yep, they're nice and fork tender. I'm going to turn off my stove here. And what I want to do is uh, puree it with an immersion blender. I'm going to carefully immersion blend. It's hot, so you want to be careful. Love this immersion blender. The beautiful thing about my kitchen, it's laid out that I could plug it in right next door. The immersion blender, it's not as smooth as if you put it in a uh, regular uh, Vitamix blender or whatever blender you use. Mmm. Darn. Darn, it's good. Okay, I'm going to add in my coconut milk. This is about a cup of coconut milk. Maybe a half a teaspoon salt. You could add in heavy cream if you prefer. More taste. Now that I've added the salt and the coconut milk. You know the coconut milk milk isn't overpowering at all. You could barely taste it. I think this recipe really worked. Alright, I'm gonna bring that up to a boil for a few minutes. Okay, this has come up to a nice simmer. I'm just going to give it maybe three to five minutes so that the coconut milk gets all blended into the soup all right and then the one last thing that i want to do is splash some grease i'm going to squeeze the lime you don't want to cook the lime or if you use lemon you don't want to cook it in because then it becomes really bitter it's about two tablespoons of lime juice it's perfect. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. Look at this soup. How amazing does it look? And I've got to tell you, it smells even better. And I can't wait to eat a lot of it. I top this with extra virgin olive oil and toasted hazelnuts. You could use whatever type of nuts you prefer. It gives the soup a nice texture. Okay, beautiful people, it's the real moment of truth. I know I taste it all the time, but oh my God, it smells so incredible in here. Wow. The coconut milk, really, it's not overpowering. The curry powder that I added in here, it just blended, the amount was just perfect. Wow, all of the vegetables, the tomato, everything just married together so well. There's no one flavor that's overpowering, but you truly get the taste of the butternut squash. And honestly, if you're not a cauliflower lover, you wouldn't even know that it's in here. I've added some toasted hazelnut on it, that little crunch in the end, perfect topping. The curry powder, the amount was just perfect. Mm. If you're not a cauliflower lover, you probably wouldn't even know that it's there. The butternut uh, squash flavor comes through, so you get that real taste of a butternut squash uh, soup. Hope you'll take the time to make this recipe and love it as much as I did. Until next time, happy cooking! Subscribe to our food blog to get notification whenever we post a new recipe and follow us on Instagram.